Prime Minister of the Republic of Finland, Sanna Marin. Good morning, dear colleagues. Our sitting is uh, resumed. The next item on the agenda is uh, This is Europe, a debate with the Prime Minister of Finland, Sanna Marin. Dear colleagues, today we have with us, dear Prime Minister, thank you, dear Sanna, for accepting our invitation to address the Parliament and the people of Europe as part of our This is Europe series of debates. The world around us is changing faster than many thought possible. Many of us would never have imagined that Europe would again experience war on its doorstep. And on February 24th, when President Putin's tanks rolled into independent and sovereign Ukraine, many of us would never have imagined that Russia's aggression would last over 200 days. The warning signs were there. We saw what happened in Crimea, what they did to Navalny, how they tried to crush democracy in Belarus, the targeted threats against Finland, the EU country with the longest border with Russia. Now it is time to respond, to stand up, to the values and for the values that give Europe its sustainable advantage. And in doing so, we must be ready to adapt to the changing geopolitical realities. Right now, people are worried about the soaring prices of gas and electricity. There are things that we can do together, even temporarily, to limit the impact while we implement long-term strategies. We can no longer afford to depend on undependable actors. And to face our real, shared security challenges, work must start immediately to build a real security and defence union. And here, I would like to welcome Finland's historic decision to join NATO. We know Finland has been a long-time NATO partner and will be a key security contributor in Northern Europe and in the Baltic Sea area. The ramping up of efforts, dear colleagues, will come at a cost, but if ever there was a moment for more Europe, it is here and it is now. Tomorrow, the European Parliament here, we will host the President of the European Commission for the State of the European Union debate, where we will have an opportunity to speak about these reforms. My hope is to see Finland play a central role in shaping the future of a more resilient, more united Europe. So, dear Prime Minister, Yes, Anna, the floor is yours. Arvoisa puhemies Metsola. Madam President. Distinguished members of the European Parliament, Europeans. My visit here at the European Parliament comes at a bleak hour. Europe is at war. With its aggression towards Ukraine, Russia has broken and abandoned the key principles and commitments of the European security order. The Exceptional instability in the energy markets and inflation are threaten, threatening Europe with a downturn. The record high drought and natural disasters say that climate change is progressing. And if we do not act uh, in time, act now, it will be too late. We will not get a second chance. But uh, in the bleakest hours, there, are, there is still hope. Ukraine will win the war with our support. There are no other alternatives. In our hearts, they have already won. The Ukrainians are courageous and they do not give up. Ukraine's counteroffensive is now progressing unbelievably swiftly. Russia has now been forced to retreat from many areas. And together, we have responded to Russia's aggression with 
sanctions and by delivering Ukraine military, financial and humanitarian aid. Europe and the Western world have been very determined and ha have shown great unity. And unity is our greatest strength here. We need now more unity than ever when Russia is using energy as a weapon towards Europe. Blackmailing our societies through energy uh, supply is a way for Russia to crumble and, and destroy Europeans support to Ukraine and to destroy our unity and Putin must not be allowed to succeed in this but but Russia is using energy uh, to blackmail Europe it is operating very short-sightedly and this ongoing energy crisis will mean that Europe will break free from Russian fossil energy even faster than was thought and Russia is destroying its own economy and its own future our trust to Russia is gone, and even though the, war, the war, war would end today, our trust will not be regained for a long time now. But we must show solidarity towards each other, we must look after our citizens, we must ensure that we have energy available throughout Europe, and we must be able to take exceptional measures to lower the prices of energy. It is in these tough times that the unity of Europe is really measured. Our commitment to, to human rights, to rule of law, and to democracy is now measured. Uh, Russia thinks that our, our democracy, our diversity, and the respect of human rights make us weak. And it is this dark doctrine that Russia is exporting. But this is what makes us strong. Our communities are flourishing because in a democracy, people can make decisions for their own future. And we value diversity, we promote human rights, we want to give everybody the chance to succeed. Uh, dear parliamentarians, it is an honor to be here today speaking to you. The role of the European Parliament as a defender of our joint values is very important at a time when these values are challenged, put to the test. And the European Union is the most important political framework of all of its member states. And after Russia's aggression, we have proven that we can act together, uh, work together over and over again. And the unity of Europe does not come from above. It comes from lively democratic discussion and from an understanding towards each other. The crisis of the past few years, the pandemic, war, and now the energy crisis have shown that we need solidarity. We need unity because every member state can need this in, the, in their turn. And that is why we need to foster our unity, because if the EU is internally divided, it is weak. And that is what Russia wants. Dear friends, we will be able to tackle Russia's extortion and the long winter, but we need unity, determination and courage to do that. And when we calculate the price of war in euros, the Ukrainians are calculating it in human lives. We are not just talking about U Ukraine, but we are talking about European values and the entire international rule-based system. Members of the European Parliament, Madam President, the place of Ukraine is in the European Union. In June, we showed integrity and our trustworthiness as a partner when we made new decisions as to the expansion of the European Union. Ukraine and Moldova were given the candidate country status and Georgia was given a European perspective. And the convergence of the countries in the West Balkans is finally progressing. The road to becoming a member is not short and the process will not be swift. But the European Union's doors must be open to all European countries that want to be part of our value community and are committed to making the necessary reforms. We are talking about the country's own willingness to decide for their own futures and their place in the world. We are talking about the basic principle that Russia is now attacking against. The world of spheres of influence that Russia is now seeking cannot be approved. Russia is challenging us blackmailing us, threatening us, but we will not cave. As a result of Russia's aggression, Finland and Sweden have now applied to become members of NATO, and the NATO membership of our countries will reinforce the security in the entire Northern Europe, and it will make NATO stronger. As a result of Russia's actions, the Western world is more united than ever, and Russia is lonelier than ever. And first and foremost, we must 
continue our support to Ukraine in all of its forms and we must be ready to take more sanctions because the more impact we make with sanctions, the more expensive it will become for Russia to continue to war. The sanctions must be reflected in the everyday lives of ordinary Russians. It is not right that while Russia is killing civilians in Ukraine, Russian tourists are free to travel in Europe. We must limit the issuing of visas very strongly and the visa facilitation agreement between the EU and Russia. Uh, we must discontinue that. It is a well-founded decision, but it is not enough. Madam President, energy availability and price will be one of the key questions of the coming months and years. Together, we must do everything we can so that ordinary citizens and companies can survive the coming fall and winter. In the short term, it is necessary to find all the ways that we can use to secure the supply of energy and lower energy prices. It is important that the Commission put forth, put, puts forth proposals that can be used to decrease the price of electricity, to tackle the disturbances in the electricity markets and acute questions such as the electricity derivatives exchange problems. We, ordinary solutions are no longer enough. We need new bold solutions and it may be necessary to take exceptional measures. In the medium and long term, the only way, the only way we can come out of the energy crisis is to invest very strongly to renewable and emissions-free energy production common European transfer networks and storage technologies. We must break free from Russia, Russian fossil energy as swiftly as possible. Energy investments are necessary so that we can tackle the climate crisis. Even though the situation is far from what we would hope and it will test all European countries in an unprecedented manner, the crisis is also an opportunity for a better future. Now, at the latest, we must take the leap towards a more climate-resilient economy. The green transition investments will make us more, uh, more self-sufficient. They will enforce, reinforce our competitiveness. It is good that the negotiations turn, now turn to their final stretch and we must ensure that we maintain the level of ambition of the Fit for 55 package. That Europa... Honorable members of the parliament, the consequence of the war and energy market crisis, the European economy is under enormous pressure. At the same time, the expectations towards EU have further increased. It is clear that the European Union budget must be sufficiently robust in order to ensure the functional capacity also in crisis. A functional and internally united union is credible also in external relationships. Still, nevertheless, uh, EU's development of functional capacity does not happen increasing the budget or slacking the common Euro economic rules. There is a lot that we must do together. The Union and the Member States' d division of tasks must be held clear in mind. The economic policy responsibility must belong to the Member States in the future as well as stated by the treaties. And we have to remember that our economies are not separate ones, but when a recession hits one member state, the, um, the, the consequences are felt in the whole union. The common rules are needed and they have to be further developed. The fiscal policy regula regulatory framework ensures that member states don't get over-indebtedness, indebted and that there is no such risk either. The common rules are not only about fin financial policy, but the common rules have to be developed, taken into account also economic, uh, social and environmental questions better than before. Rules-based and responsible economic policy must be uh, continued because only uh, a responsible and econ e e economically robust community can also help others like it does now with Ukraine. Honourable members of the part, the EU has shown its flexibility and ability to act in crisis like now. Also in exceptional times we will work with determination to work for a better Europe. Promoting common goals and realising the previously agreed upon reforms despite crisis tells about the EU's ability to act also under external pressure. 
At the same time, the crisis have, in a rough way, also revealed our vulnerabilities. The debate on the strategic autonomy is one of the most important discussions that are being carried out at the moment. It is the ability to face external threats and to ensure the functioning of our societies in all situations that is at stake. When the pandemic swept over us, we were shaken to realize just how dependent we are on extra European supply chains for medical devices. We had to rapidly build up our capacity for ensuring the availability of protective equipment and other equipment. And the war has shown us how important it is that we have production of defense material of our own and how vulnerable we are as far as energy is concerned. We must confess that we have adopted too naive an attitude towards Russia and based our expectations on its functioning on erroneous ideas. We should have better listened to our Baltic and Polish friends who have lived under the Soviet rule. We are now paying a high price for dependency on Russian energy. The war and the price of energy also threaten to uh, bring a food crisis to the world. The Europe has to have an appropriate level of self-sufficiency as far as food production is concerned, and we have to help others too. And at its worst, the lack of uh, food can lead to famine, to social unrest and migration. That is why Af the African cause is also our cause. Even if we now concentrate on energy and other acute questions and themes, we must prevent future crises too. One of the crucial questions will be our technological knowledge and competence. Our societies will be fully digitalized in the future and we can't allow ourselves to make the same mistakes that we have made with energy. We can't rely on authoritarian states for developing critical technologies or for supply chains. We have to strengthen our capacity to act with our democratic partner, partners, we can't afford being naive. It is not only an issue of economy, but also an issue of safety and functionality of our society. Even if we have challenges ahead of us, I want to underline that from the historical perspective, the European cooperation is a success story. The fact that mo more and more countries want to join our democratic community proves this. Nevertheless, Europe is no monolith. The European integration is not stopping, but it's changing constantly. We have to be better, braver, and even more competent than before. EU's capacity to function is a question of political will. Finland takes a constructive view on developing the EU. We take seriously the citizens' voice and also the new proposals made by the Conference on the Future of Europe. Opening the treaties in the middle of a crisis is not pertinent, nevertheless. Our citizens did not really ask for institutional changes, but rather reforms that give a response to the great challenges of the mankind and to their everyday concerns. These challenges can be responded to already within the present, present framework, for example, by increasing the number of qualified majority decisions under the CFDP. Members of the pure European Parliament, Europeans, this crisis is not our first, nor will it be our last crisis. And we have to rely on our greatest strength, which is our mutual trust and unity. In order to be externally strong, we have to take care of our common values internally, which are the rule of law, democracy, and the human rights. Acting on these principles, we will be able to overcome also the future crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Marin. Thank you for those clear words. I will now uh, open the floor uh, to the leaders of the political groups, and we we'll start on behalf of the EPP group, Paolo Rangel. <coughs> dear President, dear uh, Prime Minister Sana Marin, allow me very shortly to express in Portuguese my condolences to the British people 
Uma vez mais em nome do grupo PPE. Also on behalf of the EPP group, I'll say it in Portuguese, I wanted to express my deep solidarity with the whole British people for the death of Queen Elizabeth II. The Portuguese have always felt a deep affection for the Queen and also it's the, the, with the, Britain we have the oldest defensive alliance in the world. Congratulating Finland, the Finnish people and you as their elected representative on your decision to join NATO. This is one of the most important geopolitical accomplishments of the 21st century. Not only because it reinforces Finland's security, but also because it strengthens the entire Euro-Atlantic community and our collective security. Each European here gains by having Finland join NATO, just as we did by having Finland join the European Union. It is a step that requires great courage by the Finnish people and that completes the process of full reintegration of Finland with our community of origin and destiny. In, <clears throat> in fact, Europe would never be complete without Finland and its contribution. There is no European culture without Finnish culture. Our diversity is much richer for having in our linguistic heritage a non-European language which truly opens the horizons, horizons of Europe. No one can imagine European literature without the Kalevala or without the name of Eino Leino. European architecture would not be the same without the architectural and design works of Alvar Aalto not to mention the constitutional and democratic contribution of 1919 Finnish constitution, which influenced the way the powers of the head of state president are shaped in constitutions such as the Austrian, Icelandic, Irish, French of 58, Portuguese, and the constitutions after the fall of the wall, such as the Lithuanian, Romanian, Polish or Czech. Finland, the land of southern lakes, can always count on our support, on our solidarity in every respect. In this moment of grave danger, with war raging in our continent, Finland must know that 26 other European countries and the broader Euro-Atlantic community stands with you in any, channel, any challenges that Putin's and Kremlin's war may bring. And we know that we can count on you for the same because of Finnish resolve that was proved many, in many occasions across history. Yes, the 27 we stand for Ukraine and for Ukrainian path towards European Union we stand for uh, the Balkan, six Balkan member states, Georgia and Moldovan path to European Union. <laughs> Turning to my mother language. In this context of very difficult times, I would like to uh, ask you a few questions. We're seeing old and new challenges in Europe that are really being brought to the fore by the new war that we face. Let's start with energy. We need to create a genuine energy union. What proposals and what vision does Finland have in this sector? Does Finland support the uh, building of interconnectors across Europe, in Greece, in the Iberian Peninsula, in Italy, to try and diversify our energy sources? What importance would you give to investment in renewables? And what role would you give to uh, nuclear energy in Europe? Looking at the economic situation, inflation is rising, interest rates are rising, and there's a genuine risk of recession. How can the European Union help families and companies? Should there be 
a windfall tax on extraordinary profits. What does Finland think about reform, reforming the European Union? What about the agricultural crisis and food sovereignty of the EU? And finally, the Finnish know this better than anyone else. This crisis is going to affect our view of defence. With Finland entering NATO, this is one of the biggest steps in geopolitical terms at the beginning of the 21st century. What role does Finland see for the building a European defensive system with a standardised European defence industry, with a European pillar within NATO? How do you see the uh, transatlantic relationship? We know that Ukraine, above all of us, but also Finland, the Baltics, Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, all the European Union and Europe, as well the whole world, are living very worrying and challenging times. But in DPP group, we keep faith and hope, keep the belief in the European way of life, because we deeply trust in the ancient wisdom of Finnish people, and so together with you, we can say Hata Keino Keksti. <laughs> the necessity is the mother of invention, a necessidade aguça o engenho, Hata. Paolo, thank you. I give the floor now to the group leader of the SND group, Iracha Garcia Perez. You have the floor. Gracias. Thank you very much. In primer lugar, bienvenida. Bienvenida en nombre del grupo de socialistas y demócratas y en el mío propio es todo un placer poder tenerte hoy aquí. Y es que desde el principio de tu mandato y muy a pesar de los retos históricos que afrontamos, como la pandemia, la guerra, continúas liderando Finlandia. What happened? Okay, it's not working. We have no English translation. Can you hear the translation now? Yes? Oh. Sorry, no, Racha. Okay. Yes, we will start your clock from zero. Decía. Prime Minister, I was saying that from the very beginning of your mandate, and despite the uh, challenges that we face, such as the pandemic and the war, you're still at the helm of Finland, uh, leading it in a stable and strong way. And you're doing it in a true European spirit, because you know that it's only by standing united and working together, and it's only by boosting solidarity that we can lay down the uh, brave and courageous path to follow. Yes, Prime Minister, because we need people and women who are brave like you, brave women who do not to shrink back, who are not intimidated by Putin's threats, and that with determination are, have uh, led their country to join NATO. Brave women that make sure that the citizens of Finland are safer and more protected, but it's more than that. It's also that NATO members and EU members are safer and more protected, uh, that are building and strengthening a world order that is based on uh, legality, human rights, and peace. It is brave women like you that shape the future and that go down in history and that people learn about. Thousands of Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian civilians have lost their lives since that terrible 24th of February. Millions have been displaced or have had to flee to neighboring countries. Faced with a uh, Putin's atrocities, the EU has taken historic measures, and uh, Finland's support and your leadership, Prime Minister, have been vital for this. Uh, and uh, the more Putin threatens, the more unity he'll come up against. Now he wants to, he's trying to divide us by cutting off uh, energy sources, hoping that this great social unrest, uh, uh, that there could be great social unrest, and that it will mean that people lose trust in their institutions. But we're not going to allow him, as you said, we cannot continue with business as usual. We have to change things, and changing the rules of the electricity market is not enough. 
No, we have to uh, immediately halt speculation in the gas market, increase its transparency, and uh, build the necessary infrastructure, as well as tax the exorbitant profits in order to help those who are in most difficulty. Because the best anti-Putin antidote and against the best antidote against his anti-European allies and the far right is to have a more cohesive and democratic society that is resilient and that can provide solutions. We have to make sure that we bolster our welfare state uh, and we need to halt the poverty and, in, poverty and inequality in their tracks uh, because not only do we need urgent measures, we also have to make sure that we move towards uh, the future. As the treaties make clear, the EU is a union of uh, shared values. We cannot allow Orban and his anti-European colleagues to use us as hostages so that we can act on uh, the world stage. The time has come to move towards a QMV system when it comes to decision making. And you yourself uh, referred to this in your speech, Prime Minister, and we welcome this. Prime Minister, as Social Democrats, we know that the green and digital transitions will only be possible if there is a strong social dimension. This is the only way we can ensure that, there will, uh, that our population will be prosperous. Yes, and this is the only way we can ensure equality. Yes, that includes gender equality, a real equality, so uh, that women in politics are not expected to do three times what men are. Because as you know, Sana, we are here to stay. We are here to forge our rights and to decide on our lives and the lives of the women and men of of Europe because this is how there are going to be more women and young women that are willing to shape the future. And this is how we want to support the writing of this new page in the progress of Europe and humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Garcia Perez. And now on behalf of uh, the Renew Europe group, I invite Elsie Katainen to take the floor. Thank you, Madam President, dear Prime Minister, dear Sanna, thank you for your excellent analysis on the situation of Europe. Europe has gone through the COVID crisis to the brutal war of aggression of Russia, and we are still in a very tough situation. This winter, the unity of Europe will be tested. So far, COVID and war have made Europe uh, more unified. Finland and Sweden are on their way to NATO, which is the only right solution here. The common defense of the EU is becoming stronger, but we need to now focus on our energy and food policies. We as decision makers must make swift and practical decisions and communicate the meaning of those decisions to all of our citizens. It is also important that we avoid the political polarization and the creation of blocks in Europe as best we can because the defending, defending of our values, especially in the global arena, requires that we are united and determined. Us, we Europeans, we should not step on the mind set by Putin. It is clear that the purpose of Russia's aggression has been to destroy the energy markets in Europe and uh, to try to break our ranks. Putin is using hunger as his weapon, as the food production and exports from Ukraine has been made extremely difficult. Now, more than ever, when we are facing an external threat, we need to be more uh, united, because only with a united front can we live past these very trying times. Strategic autonomy, as the Prime Minister mentioned, is the pro key priority also for the Renew Europe group. We must pay more attention to energy, security of supply and critical raw materials so that we can be and increase our self-sufficiency and stability. As decision makers, we must make sure that we increase European energy pr production and adapt to the electricity markets in a way where the gas price, increasing gas price will not mean increasing sky-high electricity bills for our citizens. We at Renew Europe want to focus more on, on diversified energy portfolio. We need biogas, forest-based energy, wind power, solar power, nuclear power, 
hydropower, geothermal, heat and all other energy forms are necessary so that we can break free from Russian fossil energy. And I hope that the Parliament and the European Council can take a very practical approach to this in their voting especially. We now need sustainable biomass-based energy forms that can take us through this acute energy crisis and can help us in achieving our energy and climate goals. And sustainable forest management has a key role in this equation. We cannot forget that. Madam Prime Minister, food security is not a concern just for us Europeans. This is exceptional drought and uh, forest fires, floods are problems that the entire world now shares. The EU must be more active in the food markets in the world. And this means that we need to secure our home base first. And by this I mean that we must secure European food production and profitability. And I would like to ask the Prime Minister, what do you see as necessary in, in, in tackling all this? Because if we do not take our own responsibility in this, then famine and the migration due to that will increase in the world. We must take care of everybody. Madam President, unfortunately, it is a fact that in the midst of all of these prolonged crises, Europe is now taking on more and more debt. And the downside of that is that our economic growth will suffer. Even during these crises, we must be able to look far away and to the horizon to make sure that future generations can pay the bills that we are now accruing, stabilizing the economy, uh, supporting the EU's strong internal markets and promoting our trade relations are the cornerstones when we are building the strong future European Union. Thank you. Kitos, I give the floor now uh, to the co-chair of the Green Group, Philip Lambert. Mr. Prime Minister, welcome. Uh, in the name of the European uh, the Greens and European Free Alliance, it's really a pleasure to see you here because your presence reminds us that actually every national government is also, as part of the European Council, as European responsibilities. And it's really important that indeed we keep that spirit uh, that member states are absolutely crucial to the advancement of the European Union. Many things that you said were actually music to my ears. and. Uh, I would say there's little to uh, disagree with you. Your country is certainly better placed to know the true nature of the Russian dictatorship. And indeed, your warnings and those of many former uh, uh, Soviet bloc countries, now member states of the European Union, have been ignored. Uh, and too long, indeed, there's been complacency, I would say especially in the biggest member states, Germany, France, Italy, uh, towards Russia, and now we are paying the price for that. And you were right to pound it out. Uh, your affirmation, of course, that united we stand stronger. You know, this is the motto of my country, l'union fait la force, and indeed, this is the motto as well of the uh, European Union. I liked also very much the fact that, and coming from you, it's interesting, uh, your insistence that, yes, fiscal rules are needed, but actually, they need to take into account the social and environmental dimensions. And that indeed is also welcome. And also from a prime minister saying that we need to tackle energy speculation is good because there's many people who, who still assert that speculation is good for the markets, you know. Uh, but we also know the downsides uh, and the extraction possibilities that give, this gives to economic players. Having said this, I think uh, real friends have the duty to be frank to one another. And I'd like actually to confront uh, key aspects of your speech, at least two of the key aspects of your speech, to the reality of um, policy making in Finland. And of course, the first is the green transition. Finland oftentimes portrays itself as a leader of the green transition. And indeed, at the last climate conference in Glasgow, your country boasted about its ambition to be climate neutral by 2035, 15 years ahead of the European Union. This bold plan turns out to be actually a false promise. Indeed, the massive carbon sink provided by your country's forests was supposed to be the cornerstone, the foundation of the plan. I say was because it turns out that in reality, the land sector, including forests, of course, now emits more carbon than it absorbs. So it's no longer a carbon sink. 
due to harmful industrial forestry practices disguised as sustainable forestry management. But forests are not only vital to our climate strategy, when properly managed, they are also a haven of biodiversity. And there again, I cannot understand that your government has actively worked against every EU initiative to include the preservation of biodiversity in forestry legislation in agriculture policy. The other source of major disappointment is your government's decision to join the so-called frugal coalition. At the height of the pandemic, when fiscal solidarity was most needed, your government, rather than extending a helping hand, stood in the way. Sure, you came around in the end, but the impression remains that for your government and for many people in Finland, every euro cent invested in our common endeavours would actually be better spent at home. Let me recall you, and you said it yourself, that all members of, uh, to you and to all the members of what I call this thingy coalition, are massive net beneficiaries of the European integration project, if only because of membership of the single market. And sooner or later, even the frugals end up needing the solidarity of others. Both Sweden and Finland are now seeking the security guarantees of their new NATO partners. So my message is simple. Membership of a club is not and can never be a one-way street. It, its benefits come hand in hand with responsibilities and commitments. So, Prime Minister Marine, under your leadership, I hope and I believe that the Finnish government will come to realise that it is in Finland's best interest to actually be, not claim to be, among the leaders of the Green Revolution and that fiscal solidarity between member states is not a waste of money, but a sound investment in our common future. Under your leadership, and with the Finnish Greens at your side, Ms. Prime Minister, this can actually happen. So just do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lambert. I give the floor now to Laura Huhtasari on behalf of the ID group. Arvoisa. Madam President and Madam Prime Minister Sanna Marin, Europe will be saved and Europeans will survive if we get rid of the EU in its present form. There is a proverb that goes, good times create weak men and women, and these weak men and women have created a shocking culture of criminal gangs in Sweden with their ir irresponsible immigration policy, and they have no means to make Sweden a safe place again. I wish to congratulate the Swedish Democrats for their excellent victory in the election, if only you had been listened to before, and not only now. Unfortunately, Finnish state enterprises have been detached from their basic task, that is, from ensuring the national security of energy supply to a money machine for companies' managers. Because of Uniper, the Finns will suffer losses of billions of euros. An indebted and poor Finland will have to pay the Germany pay German the Germans electricity bills. I don't understand why Finnish Prime Minister was not in German to negotiate and defend the Finns. Instead, he preferred to go to a festival. The security of supply should be kept in the domestic hands. Slovakia may nationalize its main electricity producer. Slova Slovakia wants to offer its citizens affordable energy. Stable and affordable energy is a sign, a guarantee of prosperity and peace. That has made it possible for the Western civilization to be born. Europe was able to give its citizens and its companies a predictable and stable environment. This it can do no longer. Green technology is not at a point in which we could use it to, to substitute the fossil fuels, not at least without uh, an important uh, decrease in the living standards. Europe has become poor. Inflation is soaring. China has almost no inflation. Europe buys Russian expensive LNG from China in 2024 will probably see a greater regression 
than uh, depression than we can even see now, and that will create a chaos. And after that, anything can happen. And at least one change has happened already in the media field and in the politics already. Our green minister w is for building a a uh, wall, and the Finnish broadcasting casting company is not saying anymore that Finland is for all. There are no, there are no fin, Finns. This change happened already after Russia uh, invaded Ukraine. Italian banks are falling and the losses sh are being socialized again with an instrument like a recovery plant. Thatcher, at the end of her career, said about the EU that we did not fight against communism in order to create a new multinational totalitarianism. We have tough times ahead of us. Maybe sometimes we have to have really tough times so that we could have better times. We should have common sense and national states uh, there again. Thank you. Dear colleagues, perhaps we should tell this secret to everyone that politicians are normal people. They use the bathroom like everyone else. They get sad or scared when something happens. They make love even when they are not French. This is how they too make kids. We are just normal people, not robots. But some people pretend not to know this especially when it is about women. Who runs the world, you would ask? Not girls, not yet. There is still a long, long way to go, and the price is high because they have no right to make mistakes or simply to live as a young woman in their private life. They are over-scrutinized and pushed to transform into something between a man and a woman just because you want to serve. Some women give up. At times, I also considered giving up. But every time you give up, you abandon a future, a future where girls and boys can be equal, truly equal. And you abandon the possibility to shape that world. You contribute to, show, to shape a world where sexism and patronizing remain the norm. Things like your skirt is too short. Your decollete is too deep or not enough. Your smile is too bright. Smile, oh no, don't smile. Be a woman, but not too much. What kind of mother are you actually? Oh, you have an opinion? Perhaps you should be less ambitious. Or there is only a chair for two men. Why don't you take a sofa when you go to Ankara? It's not a place to be as a politician when people are laughing at you. It was getting really dangerous for her career, said a former senior politician on BBC about this young lady here, because she is prime minister and also likes to dance. This is Europe, not Afghanistan, a place where men and women are equal in theory. But in reality, equality is not yet accomplished. The truth is, and it has also been my experience, that in Europe, too, in Europe too, too many women are still not equal to men in politics. You feel it in meeting rooms, you notice it during debates. If you complain, they say you are too sensitive. You should toughen up, change a little bit who you are, as if being you was not enough. As a younger politician, when I was running the first time, I was told by some men to ditch the campaign pictures where I was smiling and wearing a dress and show more serious face, switch to suits. I struggled in front of my closet, whereas I should have been dealing with files instead and smiling as much as I wanted because I like doing that and that is just light coming from the inside. But one size fits all. Maybe you want to dress like Merkel or Clinton, or perhaps you want to be like Georgia Meloni or like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. 
maybe their style is what you fancy. Whether you agree with their views or not, these are fierce women who have kept going even when their position were made impossible or too difficult. Like some of them, I love dresses and nice shoes. Does this make me a bad politician? I also love books and dancing bare feet among my voters in Flanders while sharing a beer or spending a night in my office over files I care about, what else should make me a politician? This is Europe, dear friends, the place where women should be able to lead a country into NATO and have fun too. You do not need to become someone else. Being human is more than enough. We need you to keep your head up, Prime Minister Marin. Show younger girls that politics is also a place for them, a place where they can be themselves and work on serious topics like energy, climate, security, and so on. So you are not alone. By trying to destabilize you, they have made you an icon Thank that you. I too admire. Thank you, Asita. I give the floor now to Silvia Moodyk on behalf of the left group. Arvoisa rouva puhemies. Madam President, Madam Prime Minister, through the, through the European Parliament and through your government, we have gone through many crises. We, have be, we have, must tackle these crises at the same time, and these crises are threatening the basis of our existence and the crises are no long no are not over yet covid is still there and uh, we must repair the damage for a long time now and the pandemic hit those that already uh, had it very hard and the pandemic hit uh, women's sectors uh, especially hard climate change is an ex existential threat uh, to to humanity energy prices are now going up and we are blaming climate action for that, but that is not true. The high prices are due to Russia's aggression. Uh, Russia is using energy as a weapon in this war. If or, or had we moved faster with the green tra transition, as the left has proposed for years, we would not have been so dependent on Russian fuel as we now are. We should have done more earlier. We would not be as, as vulnerable as we are now. And at the same time, when we are breaking free from Russian fossil energy. We must understand that we must also break free from all fossil energy. Anti-war activity, they, they are not contradicting our climate actions. We must focus on emissions-free uh, sustainable energy. Only through that can we become self-sufficient. We cannot be dependent on authoritarian countries in that respect anymore. And these Operations can have a strong synergy, and I think we can all win here. When the prices are as high, uh, households must really tighten their belts so that they can survive. But we need systemic changes so that societies and the structures of our economies and our way of life can become uh, sustainable, climate-friendly. And the longer we take in doing that, doing that, the more expensive it will become, and we cannot create a burden on this for, for the future generations. Democracy is in a crisis as well. Democracy is now fighting uh, autocratic regimes all over the world. And in the EU, we have countries who are threatening rule of law. Rule of law, that is the common value we have in the European Union. But we also must have a shared understanding on how important rule of law is. Rule of law and a legal society, they are the cornerstones of a free society, and those are the things that we must defend with all means possible, also with economic sanctions. Prime Minister Marin, you often talk about a vision uh, of a strategic autonomy. Uh, we support that very strongly. Thank you. Kiros. I give the floor now on behalf of the non-attached members to Enika Gieri. Dear Prime Minister, the Scandinavians, such as us, are famous for our pragmatism. That's something lacking in current EU policy. So I would just ask you to become a partner for a stronger 
Union so that we can address the most pressing problems of European citizens. Looking at the latest Eurobarometer survey, half of Europeans take the view that the EU uh, economy is going the wrong way. Uh, the cost of living is shooting up and there is a risk of disruption to energy supplies, so we must come up with a clear solution. Firstly, we must prevent the union uh, economy uh, being uh, ruined, and the awful aggression of Russia uh, must not be allowed to drag us into the abyss. We are all feeling the fallout uh, from these sanctions uh, policy. If we keep uh, doing this recession will go up, and so will joblessness. The figures are clear. The sanctions against Russia are hitting us more than the aggressor, so we, there ought to be a complete change of direction. As to proposals to changing energy policy, these will need to, to be engaged uh, as to how they ensure security of supply and a reduction of prices, and we must see uh, to it that the that gas autonomy is taken account of. The proposal for a price cap would undermine security of supply. The, the, the proportion of Russian gas in the EU is 9%, uh, but we're really, that's really focused on Central Europe. Um, countries which are landlocked are thereby worse off. The sanctions amount to a gas embargo, uh, and that has to be decided by the e European uh, Council. The third issue I would want your collaboration on is when it comes uh, to expelling ide ide the ideology uh, that uh, we need uh, to switch from nuclear uh, power enshrined in the Green Deal. Families need to get the right kind of help, and we're arguing about a lot of highly politicised rules, uh, which will just uh, burden future generations uh, with debt. Let's pursue a more fi responsible financial policy here. Companies, uh, so, in including SMEs particularly, uh, uh, must be uh, relieved. Let's keep our feet on the ground here. We should act in a culture of mutual respect. That culture ought to be restored. Please be a partner uh, for us who keeps uh, feet on the ground. We've had an, a debate about the rule of law completely pointless. Let's put an end to, uh, to this. Uh, let's have transparency in the EU. Uh, the existing ideological uh, differences should be kept out of any negotiations. Uh, this would mean Hungary would have access to what it requires. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Gheri. And now I give the floor back to you, uh, Prime Minister Marin, to answer the questions that you have received, quite a wide range of them. Go ahead. Madam President, dear Roberta, dear friends, Honourable parliamentarians, I want to thank you for your contributions today, your comments, also your critical comments. They are all very welcome. Uh, well, I will answer to some of them. First of all, I want to thank all the member states for, for the very warm welcome and support that Finland and also Sweden have been uh, enjoying through, during our NATO process. If there's something left of this war for Putin, it's two more NATO countries in Europe. Putin is going to lose the war, Ukraine is going to win it with our support, and as a result of all of this, Russia will be poorer and Finland and Sweden members of the NATO. So a very warm thanks for this. In your contributions, you talked a lot about energy, and this is very understandable because the, we are in our third biggest crisis within only a few years' time. Energy is our biggest challenge at the moment. It is now the biggest challenge. 
challenge this autumn, this coming winter, and in the coming years also. Unfortunately, this will not be solved speedily. This is our great big challenge also in the future. Finland has been making its own energy uh, transition for over the years. We are not so much dependent on fossil fuels from Russia. We have diversified our energy palette in time. We have invested in renewable energy. We have also nuclear energy that we can lean on to. So we have a very varied diversity diversified energy portfolio. But since that we are self-sufficient and we have made these decisions earlier, it doesn't help. The whole of Europe has to take these decisions at the latest now that we need in order to break free as whole Europe from fossil energy sources. We have to acknowledge, I think, our mistakes as Europe, we have been committing mistakes. We have been relying too much on Russian energy. It used to be very cheap. We have been building are thinking of Russia on false premises. We tied us e economically to others, and such, that kind of war could be avoided because it would become so expensive. But that was a false assumption. We were wrong in our thinking, so we committed a mistake there. But we mustn't stay there. We, we have to state the facts, look in the future, show solidarity to one another, and look for solutions together. What can we do together, how we can invest in renewable energy faster than before, how we can create energy grids in Europe and support one another so that the coming autumn, winter, coming years are something that we will make through them. And it is clear that one reason for our uh, problems is that we invest in renewable energy or carry out green transition. Our biggest problem is that we haven't been doing this early enough. We should have done it and carried out the change for climate, for environment, to sustainable economy much earlier, then we wouldn't be in this mess now, blackmailed by Russia. Tällä... Paolo, Rangel, uh, uh, Paolo Rangel asked what we think about windfall tax financing that we could channel to citizens. Finland takes a very open stance here in our own national decisions. We have started preparations to make possible this windfall tax, but here too, of course, we need common European solutions. They are much more functional, much more uh, reasonable, and we support co Commission in its work here. There were comments on secure, uh, food crisis, a very big concern to all of us. And as I said in uh, my introduction, the African cause is also our cause, because if we cannot make sure that our, we, uh, in, on top of our own citizens, also about the people in our neighborhood, then we will see growing restlessness, violence, maybe even wars will take place, and huge masses of migratory flows. So we have to be able to prevent this together by helping our friends in Africa and elsewhere in the world. So yes, Europe very strongly has to invest its own food production, own self-sufficiency in food production, at the same time helping those who need our support and aid. Also, you were talking about European values very clearly, and I think we have to see the reality where, very bleakly, we are living now. The war of aggression by Russia on Ukraine is only one f facet of this, uh, of the uh, fighting over values. Autocratic countries uh, make their own policy, question uh, international. Uh, multi-sided system. These countries do not respect human rights, they don't respect their own citizens' rights, and they would like to see Europe and the rest of the West as a weak part of the world. So we are struggling for our values, and together we have to make sure that democratic values are going to win. There is no other alternative. And the way we can do this is to show our strength, being strong, strong supporting Ukraine, strong when we enhance our own capacities in Europe. We cannot be naive, gullible, we mustn't be weak. So we have to also ask ourselves, could we have avoided the war in Ukraine if EU had been stronger before? Should we have been acting much stronger already when Russia uh, 
occupied Crimea. If we had been more decisive, then we would have been stronger, and maybe then this war would not have happened, would Russia then have thought that it can attack a sovereign country, an independent country like it did? Sitten vielä täällä tuli kysymyksiä Suomen ilmastotavoitteista. Also questions about Finland's, Finland's climate goals. We want to be ambitious, we want to be climate neutral by 2035. We also want to enhance nature diversity. We want to make sure that the environmental points of view will be taken into consideration in our politics and they be as an example for the rest of the world. Well, the reality is that Finland is one of the most covered countries by forests in Europe alongside with Sweden. We have a lot of forestry that's important for our industry and we think it is sustainable industry and it is nationally a vital question for us. But I do want to believe that at the same time it is possible to make strong uh, climate policy, secure nature diversity, and cr build str a strong economy. And the Finnish government, by its own actions, wants to show that by working against climate change in favor of nature and environment, we can be successful environment. Uh, internationally, we can create new green jobs and make, take care of our own citizens. So also this point of view that Irache mentioned in her contribution, that is social dimension in the green transition, that is extremely important. Then at the end about equality, that was raised in many contributions. I also believe that if there is diversity in decision taking, different people from different backgrounds, men, women, younger, older, people from different walks of lives, different social backgrounds, highly educated, but also from working class families, people taking part in decision making, then we will make our best decisions together. We need all of us on board to make these decisions because we even here in this room, we are representing all of the Europeans. We need diversity also in de our decision making. And I am very happy and pleased that in Finland, there's a government led by five uh, women politicians and we have been making very progressive politics. At the same time, we've been tackling this huge crisis within which we are all living at the moment. But also, we have made very big reforms in the, in the Finnish society. So to, to mention just a few, a historic uh, family. family legislation so that both fathers and mothers would ha take leave for their families and children. And we have uh, the education age has been um, prolonged to make sure that our citizens remain well educated. We have been tackling with the pandemic crisis and we have had a huge reform on social and health policy in Finland. In Finland, we are not just women and represent some gender in Finland. We also make very hard political decisions like any other politician in this situation. That is the reason why we are here, despite our background, age or gender. We all work for the benefit of our citizens. And when we have diversity in decision taking, then also the decisions I feel are better. So thank you very much for this opportunity to speak with you today. And thank you for your speeches. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. The sitting is now suspended until we meet again for the vote at 12.